Um, I want to talk to you about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. Hey, Dorita, welcome. Four reasons. But first, we need to do some housekeeping. This message that I'm actually about to give you is, is going to save a lot of you guys. It's going to save your lives. It's going to say, let me tell, listen to me. It is going to help you tremendously. And it is going to save your life. I know this is going to be a blessing to you. So with this being a blessing to you, when you get your aha moment, when you get that moment that hits you, sow a seed into me. I have put the link to my cash app. It's in my bio. So sow a seed because I'm telling you, this is truly going to help you. So just to, um, oh, housekeeping, that's what we're doing. I had made some notes. So if you cannot watch this entire video then don't don't watch it don't watch it unless you can watch the entire video because you know how sometimes you may watch something and you like okay well let me pull this out to do this and let me pull this out to do that no i'm literally going to give you step by step i'm going to give you the why i'm gonna give you the things to look out i'm gonna do I'm going to give you the how. A lot of times you're struggling in life because you don't know the how. So I'm actually going to give you the how. And all this came from a conversation that I had with this guy. And he has the title of a prophet. And I'm not saying that he's not called by God because when he and I had a conversation overall, overall, I got the message of what he was saying. But when he initially said it and what he put out there, it was totally, um, totally wrong. So I, I had wrote down what he said, because if I'm going to say what somebody said, I'm going to say what they said. So he did a video and the, the video, the video he did, it was about casting out, um, devils, casting out demons. So this is what he said. He said, I don't care how much you plead the blood. And then he did a demonstration. I care how much you plead the blood. I want you to plead the blood until you can't plead the blood no more. So he did a demonstration and he did a demonstration um, with witchcraft. So he said, let's say this is witchcraft and witchcraft. Hopefully, okay, it's there. Hopefully it's there. So I'm me. This is me. And he said, this is witchcraft. And he said, when you plead the blood all you're doing is you are taking and you are covering, you're covering yourself. You're covering yourself and you're covering the witchcraft with the blood of Jesus, which is, that's not scripture. That's not scripture. That's not scripture. Okay. So he said, nothing can get in because you covered with the blood, but he said, nothing can get out. Um, that's the demonstration that he that he did so i'm sorry i'm reading because i want to make sure that I, I quote him correctly so all he said you're doing is putting a covering on it you're covering when you do what the demonstration i did hey welcome lisa faye fab fly boutique llc i'm talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you and this message is not for everybody it's not it's for those who need it and you know if you need it you know if you need it or not so um, he said, all you're doing is putting a covering on it. You're so I would, I was covering me <clears throat> in the fight with the blood. He said, nothing else can come in, but nothing left when he applied the blood of Jesus. He said, you don't cover until the end. You don't cover until the end. You don't cover until you deal with ne the spirit that needs to be dealt with. That's what he said. So then he began to talk about binding and loosing and casting out demons. So he had a whole lot to say. He had a lot to say about this area. And he used scripture, but it wasn't used correctly. It wasn't used correctly. Because I believe that his heart, his heart was in the right place, but he is not, his heart was in the right place, but he does not have enough knowledge to speak on a subject that he's speaking on. That's why I always tell people and welcome to those who are, who are just coming in. We're talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. So, you know, that's why I always tell people you, if somebody say something, they need to back it up with scripture. You need to if, if somebody if somebody call themselves an apostle as a prophet, 
And today I'm not coming to you as the single women's relationship speaker and coach. Today I'm coming to you as prophetess Talisha Isola. Because, you know, what the guy said, it really bothered my spirit. And me and the Lord had like a real long talk about it. Because it really bothered my spirit because it was in error. And he has the title of prophet. And so many times people will look at a person. And that's another reason why I don't use my title a lot. Because people will look at the, the a person's title. And they'll say, oh, okay, well, he a prophet. Or he a apostle or he a pastor so he got to know what he's talking about no i tell y'all all the time and i have told y'all for uh for years whatever somebody tell you learn how to go into the bible and look at it and look for it for yourself know what the word of god says for yourself and don't just read that scripture because some of you will take a scripture and you will just read the scripture like there are people who will say oh you're not supposed to judge god say don't judge so What's the context that that scripture is in? Because when people say not to judge, that scripture that they're actually using, it says, um, judge not or you will be judged. But it also goes to talk about take the beam out of your eye to, before you try to take the moat out of your, your, your brother's eye. So if I have a whole beam, I have a whole tree, tree log in my eye. Let's say the tree log of fornication just something that came up the tree log of fornication i can't be telling you you wrong for sitting on this man lap and kissing this man where i'm i'm sleeping with a man every night i can't judge you in that because i have a beam in my eye so i can't judge you in that but the word of god also says that's why you have to know the context of the word the word of god also says that I have the right to judge those things that are righteous. I am to judge those things that are, that are righteous. But you have to have a certain lifestyle. You have to have the lifestyle to be able to judge those things that are righteous. So you have to know the word and you have to know the context of the word. But getting back to what I was saying. So he was talking about binding and loosing and he was using scripture. And like I said, I believe his heart was in the right place but he's not knowledge he does not have as much knowledge in the area of spiritual warfare that he should have to be making certain comments so he also said he said if your head hurts and you say i bind this headache all you did was bind a headache to your head so you say i loose you first he said, you get him off you. You get the spirit off you before you bind. Because the bind will go around you in that spirit. That's not correct. So everything that he said, it actually went against scripture. And I had a conversation with him. And when I had a conversation with him, I asked him, I said, what, what scripture reference? Because that's what I ask people. If you want to talk about God, you want to say something about the word, you have, you got to tell me what the word, you got to tell me what the word said, because I am a woman of the word. I am a student of the word. I am a disciple of Christ. I, I, I am discipled by him. I study the word. I spend time in the word, learning the word, learning the context of the word. And I asked him, I said, what scripture reference do you have that, um, supports this and he said i didn't he said he didn't have a scripture reference that supports it and i said okay i said well how did you get this and he said well sometimes you know things um are just not in the word of god but you given trying to give biblical you're trying to give biblical knowledge on spiritual warfare but now you you, you don't you, you're not finding it in, in the bible i mean to me that didn't make sense and we are always growing, all of us. All of us are always growing. All of us are always maturing. We're always growing. We're always maturing. However, if you don't have a, a enough knowledge, like, I mean, real knowledge, to where you've actually been tested and tried in that thing, knowledge, then that's not an area that you really want to speak on unless you done been through it. So, I want to give you some points because I'm literally going to give you the how i'm going to give you some pointers and let me tell you i'm gonna give you some pointers i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you the reasons why i'm gonna give you some weapons that you can use i'm gonna do a demonstration for you i'm gonna tell you 
also what to look out for because when you try to partake and I, it won't be spooky because some people think spiritual warfare is spooky but spiritual warfare the the concept of spiritual warfare is very simple like people make spiritual warfare harder than what it is but there are people who try to do spiritual warfare that does not have spiritual authority so let's get to point one point one so when you are delivered and when you are, because these are the points that I took from the conversation, because these were the loopholes in what he was saying. So when you are delivered and when you are set free, you don't stop applying the spiritual weapons. The spiritual weapons. A lot of times you'll go and somebody will lay hands on you and be careful who you let lay hands on you. Everybody who lay hands on you is not qualified to lay hands on you. So you'll go to somebody and they, they cast the spirit out of you. But let me tell you, you have to continue. You know, the, the spirit will be cast out, uh, cast out of you. And then you'll go back about your day just moving and moving and moving. And then all of a sudden, you operating in the same thing, having the same battle that you was having before. And you don't know why. So, with that being said, if when something is broken off your life, when the spirit is broken off your life, if you are not filling yourself, with God's word daily, that spirit can come back. If you are not filling yourself with God's word daily, that spirit can come back. And you also can create open doors for a spirit to enter your life based off the based off of your lifestyle. So Matthew 12, 43 and 44, it says that when an unclean spirit leaves out of you, then it, it, it roams the earth looking for a home, but it can't find none. So what it says is that it will return. I will return back to my home and it finds that home clean and garnished. You know why? Because there was something that left, but nothing was replaced. You have to you have to put something there. So if you are dealing with, let's say that you're dealing with bitterness, you're dealing with unforgiveness, you're dealing with anger, you're dealing with hate hatred, and those spirits go out, you want to make sure you you those spirits are because we can use binding and loosing in this concept. So those spirits are are being bound, which means being tied up. Then you need something loose. You need to lose God's spirit of forgiveness, God's spirit of love, God's spirit of gentleness. Something needs to be loose in your life and you need to be operating in that. You have to operate in that. So, um, you have to have a daily renewal. You have to, this is, let me tell you, this is an everyday thing. This is an everyday thing thing this is an everyday thing this is an everyday walk so you have to have a daily renewing of your heart your spirit with the word of god now that was um hey so i guess that point i'm on point one when you are delivered set free when you're delivered or set free you don't stop applying spiritual principles so that was one a now this is one b we all have iniquity we all have iniquity. Everybody deals with iniquity. Everybody deals with iniquity. Iniquity comes through your bloodline. Iniquity is where the sins of the father visit to the third and the fourth generations. When people say there's no such thing as generational curses, they don't know the word. You stay away from them. They don't know the word. They don't know the word. They don't understand the word. They, they may be able to quote a scripture but they don't have an understanding they don't have god's spirit so that's when it's and that's deuteronomy 5 and 9 when it says that the sins of the father visit unto the third and the fourth generations and um uh, even when jesus was uh being crucified and they said uh give us barabbas crucified jesus and they said let 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 uh let 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 whatever it is let the sin be upon us and our children <laughs> like they spoke it they spoke it let let it be upon us and our children so you have to deal with iniquity and i'm gonna I'm teach you how to deal with iniquity but you have to deal with iniquity because if you don't deal with iniquity there are things in you that was in your parents that was in your grandparents your great-grandparents and if you don't deal with it, those things are going to show up in your children. When people say, oh, she just like her daddy. Oh, she just like her mama. Guess it's showing up. 
Oh, she like that because that's how her daddy was. You have to deal with the iniquity. So, um, and it says uh, that you, he visits to the third and the fourth generations of them that hate him. And you may say, well, you may say, well, my, um, my, my family, my, my I come from, from a Christian home. I come from a Christian household. That's why I come from a Christian household. They didn't, they didn't hate anybody. They didn't hate anybody. The, he says that God says, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. That's what he said. If you love him, that you will keep his commandments. That's the word or that's what, that's what he tells us. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So if you are not keeping his commandments, you're not loving him. And then you have to ask yourself, using most of, most people saw the Aretha Franklin story. So were they Christians? Called themselves Christians because everybody who called themselves Christians is not a Christian. When they were first called Christians, it was at Antioch and it was Paul and Barnabas. And guess what? They had a certain lifestyle. There's a certain lifestyle that goes with being a Christian. It's a certain lifestyle. So with Aretha Franklin daddy, he liked to party Saturday nights, but in, on Sundays he wanted to be in a pulpit. Do you, we don't know the secret lives of those before us. So, point number two, learn your spiritual weapons and how to use them. Learn your spiritual weapons and how to use them. So, this will be 2A. One of the spiritual weapons is the blood of Jesus. So, you should plead the blood like your life depends on it. Plead the blood of Jesus like your life depends on it because it actually does. So, when it comes to pleading, just like a lawyer... A lawyer will go and stand before a judge and a lawyer will stand before the ju a judge and the jury and he will plead your case for you. He will plead your innocence. That's what the blood does because the blood makes atonement for our sins. That means for, uh, the, um, it makes atonement for our souls. So that means the, the blood is actually speaking for you. It is speaking up for you. So when people say, oh, I try to live holy, but I'm having a hard time. But when you are really striving for holiness and you're really striving to, because people, let me tell you, and this is for not everybody. I'm telling you, because some people want to have, want to just have a life, a party, a party life. But hey, when you are a Christian, that is a suffering way. It tells us, as Christ has suffered, arm yourself likewise. That means have the same mind. As Christ suffered, have the same mind to suffer like he suffered. That's what the word of God says. But some people want to be Christians and you want to party. No, look, you got to pick a side. So, just like a lawyer pleads your case, the blood, it speaks for us. The blood speaks on our behalf. It speaks on our behalf. Welcome, Diana. Welcome to all those who are just coming in. We're talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you. So Leviticus 17 and 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. So everything, all the entire life of Jesus Christ, the entire life of Jesus Christ is in the his blood his entire life is in his blood from the birth all the way to the resurrection is in the blood and it says and i have given to you i have given it to you talking about the blood to make atonement for your souls upon the altar for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul the fight is for your soul the fight is over your soul that's what the battle is over it's over it's it's for it's over our souls and welcome to those who are coming and we're talking about four reasons why the enemy is defeating you and i'm not coming to you in the capacity today as talisha isola the single woman's relationship speaker and coach I'm coming to you today in the capacity as prophetess Talisha because God had gave me a word to share with you. So I'm coming to you in that capacity on tonight. So let's talk about what the soul is. Your soul is your mind, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Whoever can get your mind 
can get into your heart. That's why you see people that's in bad relationships and you like, why are they in this relationship? Like, what are they doing? Like, they can do so much better because the person they're in a relationship with, guess what? They got into their mind and then they got into their heart. And guess what? That person was able to give their will and, to their, em and their emotions over to that person. So whoever has your mind gets your heart. Whoever has the heart has you. That's why the, the Bible says to guard your heart with, with diligence. Diligently guard your heart. So to be. To be. So we talked about um, how the guy ended up saying, he said, if your head hurts and you say, I bind this headache, all you did was bind the headache to your head. So you say, I loose you first. He said, you get him off you before you bind because the bind will go around you and him, which I told you that's not scripture. So if, first of all, if I have a headache, I wouldn't bind a headache. If I have a headache, what I would use is the stripes of Jesus because that's what brings healing is the stripes of Jesus. And that's in Isaiah 53 and 5. So you have to, I would apply the stripes. You have to know how to apply the word. So to be, that was to be one, to be two. I'm trying to keep a number for y'all to keep them together. So the Bible, he says you don't bind because if you bind, then you bind whatever it is to you. That's, that's not, that's not scripture. He said you loose it first. Now let me tell you, when you bind something, you tie it up. When you loose something, you're releasing it. You're letting it go. Um, I know where he got it from, but he took it out of context. So in Mark, in Mark 3 and 27, it talks about binding the strong man. It says that no man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods. That means take his goods. No man can enter a strong man's house and take his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he can take what he has. So, you know, there, there are spirits, there, there are spirits that have, has actually laid claims to you, to your life. Some of you, some of you have a bad spirit of unforgiveness. Like some of you really got a spirit of unforgiveness. Some of you got like such a bad attitude and speaking to, I'm like, this is coming from somebody who used to have a terrible attitude. I had a terrible attitude. When I tell you I had a terrible attitude, like my, I, my attitude was so bad that my mom was just fed up and she wanted to put me in a home because she felt like I didn't love her her and my dad my dad didn't want that my attitude was so bad i had when that it was bad let's just say it was bad and i know what it's like but it came from bitterness and it came for from anger and some of you have that spirit tied to you so badly so badly like somebody go to talk to you who has harmed you like you will just snap at them and you have to deal with that you have to you have to deal with that so some of you deal with that spirit so bad and that's a spirit that you will want to bind and in place of that which you would lose because that's that's a strong man that's a strong man so that's the spirit that has laid hold to your body it's a spirit that laid hold to your body let me give you what happened to me so i recognize like my attitude is much better not people like me <laughs> My attitude is much better now. So this is what happened to me. Because it does say that we overcome by the blood of the lamb. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of the, uh, of the testimony. So let me tell you my testimony. I dealt with bitterness for a great deal. <laughs> You're laughing at me, Diana. I dealt with bitterness for a great deal of my life. Literally all my life. And I'm 40 plus. I am, I'm okay. I'll tell my age. Because I generally don't tell my age. Um. How old am I? Oh, 40, I'll be 42 this year, this month. I'll be 42. I love you too, girl. I'll be 42 years old this summer. Like I've already, I'm perimenopause. I've already started menopause. And um, all of my life, I've dealt with bitterness. It was revealed to me that the spirit of bitter, bitterness had laid hold to me last year. And... What I did is when I found that out, it's like, uh-uh, because it, that's iniquity because it's iniquity because bitterness come through my bloodline. And the thing about it, you got to fight. You have to, you have to fight. 
if you don't fight, then what you gonna do? Roll over and die? You know? What are you gonna do? So bitterness came from both sides of my family. So my parents dealt with bitterness, my grandparents dealt with bitterness, my great grand grandparents dealt with bitterness. So guess who dealt with bitterness and did not even know it was there? But I had to become proactive. I had to become proactive because I knew how and I know how bitterness destroys you. Bitterness is cancer. People think cancer is bad. Bitterness is cancer. Unforgiveness is cancer. Anger is cancer. Just like cancer eats away at you and destroys you, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, it eats a it eats away at you. It it destroys you. It it destroys you unless you take hold of it. So I I Found that out because I just was listening to this. I listened to scriptures and um, it was a whole CD that talked about bitterness, an entire CD on scriptures on bitterness. And so I, at night I would go to sleep and I would have my phone. I sleep with my phone in my bed. But every day that I would wake up, it's like my phone would be on the floor. My phone never never would be on the floor ever like my phone would always stay in the bed where i put it at but when i started listening to these scriptures on bitterness i would get up and i'm like where's my phone and my phone would always be on the floor not knowing that in the middle of the night i'm knocking it on the floor because it's aggravating that spirit of bitterness bitterness that iniquity of bitterness so you know what i did i took my headset and i put my my plugs in my ear and i just listened to it so it's it's really getting into my spirit now so in the middle of the night i woke up and I grabbed my headset and I took it and I was about to sling it across the room and I said uh uh that spirit got to go I put that headset in it because when you listen to scriptures that it got to go it has to go when you apply the word it has to go so that was a way that I bind the, bind the strong man by listening to those scriptures of bitterness but I didn't even know it was there and guess what since I did that the 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 certain people who I was bitter towards, I had to be intentional with walking towards them with kindness. I had to be intentional about being gentle. I had to be intentional about these things. You got to be intentional. Like this is an intentional lifestyle. <laughs> like people like um, what is the green guy? Whatever his name. Terrence Green something where he had this song intentional. Everybody want to sing the song intentional. But I had to be intentional about it. So let's go back to this. So Matthew 18 and 18 it says whatever is bind, bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And I told you when you bind something you tie it up. When you loose it then you're releasing it. Now what the guy had got mixed up is because there is a scripture where they say loose him. And that's when Jesus was talking about um, the grave clothes that was on Lazarus. So if I say they are over there and I say and I spell they are over there. If I spell there, T-H-E-I-R, that's incorrect. What I want to use is T-H-E-R-E. So it's so important that you use use things properly. Now, if he would have said lose him, then yes. That makes sense. If he said loose him, that makes sense. So it talks about that in John 11 and 44 where it says um, loose him. And like I said, that's when Jesus was telling um, the grave clothes that's what, that was on Lazarus to loose him and to let him go. 